Hello everyone and welcome to a new reading. Today we are going to finish off all the friendship readings for Blackpink. I have a list and I think I only need one more which is the relationship reading or the friendship reading. What dynamics do Jenny and Rose have? And I thought it was appropriate to do it now considering that Blackpink finally had a comeback. Now, I did mention in my, if I'm correct, I mentioned in my group reading that they were not going to have one, but they did, so, you know, I hate to be wrong, but I'm just happy that Blinks finally got a group activity, and I hope you guys enjoy it and give Blackpink the success that they deserve for all the time that you guys had to wait for it. Um, but anyway, I, I actually enjoyed the chorus for Pink Venom, but I need to listen to it over and over again to see, um how much I enjoy it. <laughs> but anyway, let's just jump into this reading. The first question that we're asking is, this is a card to represent the connection or the dynamics that Jenny and Rose have, have Neptune, and then one card to represent Jenny, or maybe two, that's fine. And then one card to represent Rose in this pair. I'll just take, I'll take those two. If I took two for Jenny, I'll take two for Rose. I find it very funny. I think Blackpink might be the Great. only group I can actually see me finishing those friendship readings. Um, other ones too, but they're only four, so of course it makes sense that I'll be able to finish this one faster. Okay, so the cards that represent Jenny in this dynamic, we have the King of Wands, the Seven of Wands reverse. And the ones that represent Rosé is the Two of Wands and the Nine of Pentacles reverse. Well, before we get into that, let's look at this. So the card that represents the relationship between Jenny and Rosé is Neptune. So this tells me that both of them have very big imaginations. They have a very deep connection. One where there's some mutual understanding or... Um, okay, it's strange. Because there seems to be mutual understanding and also a lot of confusion confusion so this makes me think that they could have a lot of misunderstandings or times where they don't really get each other but it doesn't become conflicts instead they just kind of understand each other the less they talk if that makes sense it's weird because i do feel that sometimes they just look at each other and they're like yeah i understand exactly what you meant and other times they talk and they kind of go in circles and circles but eventually they understand each other um, because Neptune can be an energy that is very confusing um, it can be a little bit um, I guess unknown and mysterious Neptune is also the energy you know is the ruling planet of Pisces so um, you can imagine that this could be a relationship with both of them really understand each other really like each other really care for each other like they're very empathetic they they really, maybe they can't really put into words how they understand each other or they can't really put into words how much they care for each other but it's there and they both mutually understand um i just don't know how confusing confusing it can be like maybe they don't know how to speak to each other or maybe it can be as simple as just not knowing how to um it's weird because I feel that even if they don't know how to communicate well with each other, they understand each other. Um, so, that I mean, that's Neptune for you, right? <laughs> so now the cards that represent Jenny, we have the King of Wands and the Seven of Wands reverse. So this tells me that she is fearless. She doesn't give up. She just goes forward all the time. She just takes action. This King of Wands tells me that she's very mature. She knows when to take action and she knows how to go about it. Um, she is very, very confident because we have Wands energy. Usually the Seven of Wands to me means, you know, being afraid of something. Um, also being afraid of things that cannot be seen. But with it being reversed, I do feel that this just kind of shows that even if Jenny's afraid of doing something, she finds the courage and like a lion just pushes forward. She's very confident. She just moves and gets things done uh, she is not held back by anything because she figures out a way to just push beyond that and overcome any obstacle so that's the energy that Jenny has very confident and fearless now the energy for Rose we have the two of wands and the nine of pentacles reversed so in this case Rose feels like someone that is very confident 
within her comfort zone of course she feels like she has a world on her hands she feels ready to move beyond what she has she's ready to expand i do feel that there's this sense of a quiet confidence right it is a confidence of like she feels like she has overgrown um her circle if that makes sense or like whatever she's been working on and she wants to expand and get a sense of independence so this nine of pentacles upright usually talks about someone that has built their own paradise that has uh, a sense of independence financial financial independence career that is a career that's successful uh, a sense of feeling paradise because someone has all the material needs that they desire and also need as well right all their needs are met and all their wants are met as well so in this case with it being reversed i do feel that rose is in a spot where she feels very confident where she's at but she wants to expand in order to create her uh, desired outcome or her paradise uh what however that may look like i do feel that this is in regards to her career uh not so much her finances also she wants to be healthy she wants to be knowledgeable so i do feel that one of the things is that she wants to get a lot more knowledge to have a very healthy outlook on her career i don't think that this is about success the way that many of you will think of success career-wise uh, like making lots of money being very popular uh, being recognized by the public or being recognized by other people i do feel that this type of career expansion is leaning more towards knowledge um so i do feel that uh rose um, the cards here are depicting her desires of growing and expanding. So let's jump on the, the next question, which is how, okay, how does Jenny see Rose and how does Rose see Jenny Ro? Hold up. I'll take all three actually. I feel kind of chatty. It's fine. So Jenny sees Rose as the Queen of Swords reverse. Okay, so this means that Jenny sees Rose as someone that has a lot to say, someone that's very witty, someone that is very intelligent, very smart, but someone that holds back a lot. So remember this Neptune energy? This Queen of Swords kind of tells me that Jenny sees the potential in Rose. Jenny sees how smart she is and all of that but rosa seems to hold back a lot maybe she's afraid of what other people will say or she feels like or maybe rosa in this case feels like she's not uh doesn't have the right words to say what she thinks but um in this case jenny sees that there's a lot of potential uh in rosa's way of i guess whatever she's thinking um but she's just not saying it also, another thing that I got was that Jenny doesn't mind saying things how they are. She's very straightforward, very bold. So I do feel that those traits are something that she thinks Rose is missing. So I think she sometimes feels that Rose is too nice, um, if that makes sense. Now, the way that Rose sees Jenny, the first card that came up, like looking up, is the Nine of Swords. So this is the energy of someone that is very stressed out. <laughs> I guess Rose just sees that Jenny has a lot going on in her mind. She's overthinking something or she's stressed out about something. Rose sees it. Uh, I think Rose is able to see the vulnerable side of Jenny. And in this case, it will be the overthinking of an idea or something. Something that makes Jenny afraid in the sense of um, not afraid of something wrong going with her but afraid of an, maybe something that's not working out or something that she can't figure out so that's what the Nine of Swords is doing right now but let's look at the other cards <laughs> we have the Queen of Swords reverse and the Ace of Pentacles reverse so the thing that Jenny could be overthinking is something in regards to her career or it could be something in regards to a long-lasting relationship. Um, that's what the Ace of Pentacles could be doing here. But you know what's the other thing that I'm also getting? I feel that this is more about career because with the Swords energy, it feels like there's negotiations going on. And um, Rose feels like Jenny's holding back as well because we have the queen of swords reverse so i it's funny they mirror each other in a way um just like jenny sees how rose is holding back when she speaks 
Rose sees how Jenny holds back as well, but it comes from a different place, right? Jenny sees how smart Rose is, but in the other hand, Rose sees how Jenny is struggling with something, and that's what she's not speaking up about. So this Queen of Swords is also, in this case, is representing the same thing as we saw earlier, but based on the other cards that came out, the way that Rose sees Jenny is that if Jenny is struggling with her career, or if she's struggling with negotiations, or struggling with money, or struggling with finding some sort of uh, material stability of sorts, uh, Jenny pref you know, stresses stresses about it and she's anxious about it but she can't speak up about it because she either doesn't know how to put it into words when she feels uncomfortable or she doesn't know how to put it into words when she feels like she needs help um so i do feel that in this case rose is able sees jenny as someone that um is very guarded and keeps her emotions very tightly not behind not behind bars, but very... She's very guarded, basically. That's what I'm trying to get at. Jenny's very guarded, and Rose is able to see that. But seeing this Queen of Swords reverse on both of them kind of shows me that this is where this Neptune energy is coming in, where the confusion is at, right? There's communication issues with them because things are not being said, but they both are able to feel what is not being said. So this could create a bit of confusion because I do feel that they're able to sometimes see what the other one has not said yet. They're able to read very well between the lines of each other. Um, and that could, I don't necessarily think that creates conflict as much as just mutual understanding, but I do feel that it can be a bit confusing because sometimes they'll be like, oh, you told me about that one thing. And then the other one will be like, I never said that. And it's true. They never said that. It's just that they're very good at just knowing what's actually going on. So let's go on to the next thing, which is how do Jenny and Rose like to spend their time together? Like, what do they like to do? We have Mercury. Okay, I'm not surprised. What do they like to do? They like to talk and talk and talk and talk. Um, I guess I'm not surprised seeing how um, Neptune, instead of talking about the imaginative part of Neptune and like the dreamlike energy that Neptune carries, we were focusing actually on the communication of Neptune and how confusing it can be. So seeing the Mercury card right here, I do feel that it makes sense that what they like to do or how they like to spend their time together is talking to each other, communicating with each other, maybe talking about issues that they have or about things that they have learned. With Mercury, there is, uh, Mercury is a ruler of Gemini and Virgo, so I do feel that they like to talk about work and they like to talk about mundane routine things, uh, you know, normal things that they do in their daily routine or things that they do to stay healthy or things or they like to talk about topics in regards to organizing their ideas and their job and stuff like that but the other thing that they also like to talk about is their short travel so oh i went to this part of town or i did this other thing i went to the store and did this so they like to so i do feel like they talk to each other very frequently and it's like short things like they don't so either they message each other a lot or they have a lot of short conversations um, so I do feel that m many of you may see them as very close friends because they're talking constantly to each other um, and it, it could be again as I mentioned it could be about very mundane things about just their day um, the other thing that I was thinking of with Mercury is how with Gemini we talk about short travels but we also talk about um, just being able to talk about anything so I do feel that they like to talk about the things that they learn um, maybe if they see funny things in the internet they send it to each other so maybe they have folder of memes that they have sent to each other i don't know why that came up but <laughs> that's that's what they like to do i guess so let's go on to the next thing which is what the what do they like about each other so what does jenny like about rose we have the two of cups reverse and what does rose like about jenny We have the Five of Swords. Cool. So with the Two of Cups, now this is kind of confusing. I'm going to admit it's kind of confusing. 
because um, with the two of cups upright, we should usually there's a sense of like soulmates or uh, understanding of each other's emotions. Um, almost, you know, I guess I, I would soulmates is the best way I can put it, right? Two people that feel like they understand each other at a very deep level. Now with this card being reversed. I didn't necessarily get anything bad as much as I felt like it just hasn't been acknowledged. Like, I don't think Jenny has acknowledged how um, similar, um, it's weird, how s similar their similitudes, what the, I don't know how to describe it, but how similar their similarities are. I, well, no, duh. I feel like I've been redundant here with that statement, but I don't know how to explain it, but... It just feels like Jenny hasn't really acknowledged how similar her and Rose are um, in the areas that they s share similarities. Because I don't want to say they're, they have the same personality because they don't. Um, and they have very different approaches to how they do things and how they go about it. But um, I do feel that their way of thinking can be pretty similar especially their way of communicating it is pretty similar especially if they both see each other as the queen of swords reverse um so yeah with this two of cups reverse i do feel that um this card is just reversed because it hasn't been acknowledged how similar they are and how they can be understood at a very deep level with that neptune energy so yeah i do feel that there is a very strong sense of mirroring and mutual understanding but yeah, the thing that, um, what is it called? The thing that Jenny likes about Rose is just that deep understanding that they have of each other, even if it's not acknowledged. And also the mirroring. Um, I don't I don't know how aware Jenny may be of that, but yeah, the mirroring. So on the other hand, we have Rose, and the thing that she likes about Jenny is the Five of Swords, which talks about someone that, very similar to the King of Wands, someone that goes for their goals and they have the mentality of winning at all costs right so jenny has apparently an energy of being able being very good with her words or something and she gets what she wants uh so to rose that's something that she really likes rose really likes how jenny is able to just uh fight for her dreams fight for uh herself and being able to achieve anything because of that never giving up energy and always winning at all costs and that confidence that jenny carries is something that rose really likes um so that five of swords doesn't necessarily feel as conflict oh wait now that i mention it actually fives are all about change and difficulties and conflict right so with this five of swords i'm getting that one of the things that rose really likes is how jenny is not afraid of confrontations uh, and that Jenny is not afraid of challenging other people um, if it comes down to it. Um, so yeah. There's a lot of swords energy here. So communication is important. I'm, I mean, Mercury is here as well. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised, right? So let's go on to the next thing. What has Jenny learned from Rose? <laughs> the Ace of Swords reversed. I don't know why all the cards are reversed. But, but this is how it happened. Yeah, and then the knight of swords i'll take it i'm gonna take it on the bottom of the deck okay so what has rosa learned from jenny oof rosa is very chatty and i'm taking it anyway i guess i'm chatty with her too i don't know oh, i saw it i need to show it and at the bottom of the deck we have the king of cups i was thinking of taking it because i did that with uh jenny but but yeah and I think the magician was on the bottom too. Interesting. Okay, I'll, I'll look at those later. So, the thing that Jenny has learned from Rose is to um, embrace the communication part of herself. So, we have the Ace of Swords reverse. So, this kind of tells me that when it comes to beginnings, Jenny struggles a lot to take the first step in situations and things. But with a Knight of Swords here it kind of shows the sense of just very quickly moving forward gemini energy you know a very young energy that is ready to explore the world ready to communicate ready to just again short travel so someone that's ready to explore their um close proximity 
So with these two cards right here, it kind of feels like the thing that Jenny has learned from Rose is how to speak up, how to take that first step, how to just jump into conversation, how to just jump into new ideas, how to just jump and do things. Um, the Knight of Swords is an energy that's moving very quickly and uh, it could be a bit reckless. Uh, so caution is always uh, put in the forefront right here, like, you know, be aware to not go too quickly or not do things super fast. But... I do feel that there's a sense of like just even if there's no inspiration, even if there's no motivation to do something or even if it's it's funny, right? Because the Ace of Swords Upright talks about someone that has clear judgment, someone that um, has a clear mind so they know how to, so their mind is working with them instead of confusing them. So I do feel that with these two cards put together, it kind of shows that the thing that Jenny has learned learn from Rose is to speak her mind but also to just jump into things and not be so cautious right it's like let loose a bit right just enjoy life for what it is um and I do have to mention that based on the number of cards that we have on this side Jenny is not mm, she's very straightforward and very honest as well but she doesn't really bit around the bush right she goes to the point and then you have someone like Rose that has a lot to say. And that's why we have a lot of cards. So the one that was at the bottom was the King of Cups. But let's look at the other ones. We have the Six of Swords. We have the Hierophant Reverse. And we have the Four of Cups. Um, so with this card, it feels like the thing that Rose has learned is how to enjoy her solitude how to walk away from situations that could be stressful you know seems like jenny was able to teach rose how to just be on her own to bring herself back together when there's a conflict or when there is issues with um not just a, not teachers authority or maybe just society like you know if if it feels like Rose hits a wall of sorts because of the established rules, because we have the Hierophant here with established rules or something, like if there's ever a conflict or a challenge or something that's not working out in that sense, uh, the thing that Rose has learned from Jenny is to just kind of go in her own world, kind of isolate herself a little bit and think things through. Because um, the Four of Cups, um, it could talk about boredom, but in this case, it kind of feels like someone that um is bored because they have decided to walk away from the issue they have decided to just remove themselves from that situation and yeah it could be a bit boring because there's no chaos there but it also kind of just feels like someone that is not in time out as in like they got in trouble but in time out as in like trying to relax and bring themselves back together right you know take a little nap from all the issues that kind of energy so i do feel that in this case Funnily enough, this is a different type of letting go and being a bit carefree, right? The thing that Rose has learned from Jenny is to um, not dwell too much into problems, not uh, be too upset if something doesn't work out. You know, a form of self-care as we have this King of Cups, right? It's like if there's something that is emotionally bothering Rose, um, Jenny has taught her how to um, process her emotions in order to do that she needs to find some sort of solitude and walk away from the problem at hand so she's not too involved in the situation or the environment and her surroundings are not influencing her emotions right um so in a way that it feels like a form of self-care of sorts with this king of cups the king of cups usually represents cancer energy and cancer energy um is very motherly very caring and it in this case, it's talking about self-care, self-nourishing, and self... I don't know why self-parenting was the word that came up, but just just taking care of herself, basically. Uh, putting herself first, right? The King of Cups is the energy of someone that knows how to work with their emotions, with their spirituality, and with their creativity. This is someone that is very mature in the sense of understanding how it works and understanding how to turn conflicts into learning experiences, but also how to turn conflicts and work through them basically instead of avoiding it or walking away they know how to work through it now let's jump into the very last card of 
this reading, which is Why Did Rose and Jenny Eat? We have the sun. So they m met so they can shine brightly. They met so they could help each other be their best selves, to be very confident, to just put themselves out in the public, to put themselves um, in the best position out there, to put themselves under the spotlight and not be afraid of who they are, to slowly embody um, their true selves because again they mirror each other a lot so they can learn a lot from each other because of how similar they are. Um, it's kind of like one of the ways you can do some shadow work is by looking at your surroundings. How do you feel about people? How do you think about them? And one of the things that you notice that other people do, uh, what triggers you and what doesn't trigger you, those things are like ways that you can use people as mirrors to help you reflect those things that you can't see about yourself. So I do feel that they kind of met so they could reflect um, each other's best qualities and also the worst ones. And also, since they're so similar, they're able to not only help mirror each other, but also help understand each other. So they're there for each other because of that mutual understanding that they have that is very deep. So I do feel there could be uh, a sense of if they're not soulmates in the sense of they have met in a past life, I do feel that this could be um, a feeling of soulmates because um, they could be coming from very similar backgrounds even if it's not within this lifetime. I do mean like the understanding and knowledge that their souls have gathered is one where they can both really understand each other and they match up very well. Uh, they're very compatible. So even if they haven't met before, which I mean I doubt, but if they haven't met before then um, in this lifetime they, they're just so compatible that they kind of feel like soulmates. Uh, because of that understanding that they have of each other um, that it slowly reflects in a form of healing and uh, confidence and shining very brightly you know they hype each other up they understand each other they are able to help each other out through conflicts and problems and all of those things are helping themselves heal and become more confident shine brightly be beautiful and just put themselves out into the spotlight without you know without being afraid of it you know they're very courageous in that sense right so that's the reason that they met to be able to uh put themselves out there as they truly are with all of the confidence in the world without any fears of being seen and you just shine very brightly so anyway i will leave that there i hope you really like this reading i thought it was very interesting because i don't i i was expecting nothing so um because i don't know them so i don't really know what type of dynamics they will have um, I don't know if they get along. I don't know if they don't get along. Because, I, again, I haven't seen anything. So, I was expecting nothing. I was just like, well, let me read the cards and see what happens. So, I'm actually very surprised that we got such um, a confusing reading. Because, I'm telling you, it was very hard for me to explain what I was feeling. Um, so, I hope you guys were able to understand that. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you guys learn from this or at least find it entertaining. Now, I'll see you on the next one or whenever that is, however that is. And love and healing from my part to you. See you on the next one. Thank you for watching and bye.